that. So, so then my relationship with God became secondary in my life, and other things came first, and I became <clears throat> more. I became further away from God, and I chose to um, do my own things, and eventually it just led me to a life of hurt and and pain and loneliness and that kind of thing. And then <clears throat> I knew God called me in my life, but I didn't want to go back to God. I was like, I still wanted to have that relationship with God. I was like, God, I won't follow you until you pursue me. And I just wanted to have that intimate relationship with God. And as the years went by and I was more in pain and hurt and despair. <clears throat> and then there came a time in when my aunt, who I was really close with, passed away, and, and still I didn't want to turn to God, and I knew He was the only source of help where I can get, and I knew I couldn't do it on my own, and I was falling, falling, and so eventually one, during the Easter weekend, that's when <clears throat> I gave my life to God and I surrendered to Him and it was when everyone was sleeping and I was the only one awake and and I knew that that time that it was real because it just everything about it was different and <clears throat> and yeah so it's just I know since then, it's just been a walk with God and an intimate relationship with Him day by day. And during that time, too, I was grieving, and God was the only source of strength and the only source of joy and just basically the only thing that I ever wanted. Grieving is really hard. It's, it's like... You don't know what to do with your life. You don't know what's going on. You don't know how you will feel or what you are actually feeling. Really important to to walk with God when you're grieving because He is the ultimate giver. He is the ultimate, you know, caregiver, and He will supply all your needs and and just take care of you. And <clears throat> I just wanted to say, you know. God is always there and it's we need to go back to our first love and just continue to follow him and pursue him because he is pursuing us you know he is wanting <clears throat> to love us and wanting to be there and just continue to complete our lives keep on pressing on Hi, my name is uh, David uh, Chichu. I'm from. Uh, I was born in a small community called uh, Moose Factory, and, and basically, uh, what the Lord has done in my life. But I, it was at the age of six that I I made a commitment to Jesus Christ. It was there, uh, just uh, at a little kids club, at a little VBS club. That uh, I'm not uh, that I choose to follow Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, I was taught through God's word in our home. I grew up in a, in a, uh, with parents that uh, made a commitment to Christ at an early age. So my, I guess as I continued to uh, grow up and later on my mid mid teen, turn my back on Jesus Christ. I begin to do the things. I guess what uh, I begin to do the things that were harmful to my life and even harm, harmful to my body. I got involved with uh, various drugs and um, alcohol and other things that uh, that really. I guess caused pain and suffering in my life. I did this for 15 years, 15, 16 years. It was in late June uh, when I made uh, a commitment to Jesus Christ in 1997. Uh, uh, it was at the time where I was going through 
uh, I guess, some real difficult times. I just lost uh, my mother-in-law two weeks before, and we just, um, and I just, uh, our marriage with my wife after five years was basically over because of the various things I did in my life, but I remember going home to Moose Factory, and um, and then I uh, going home to Moose Factory, and I had it in my mind that um, that I was going to go on a real uh, a drunken binge, and um, and so apparently that's what I did, and I went on a big uh, two-day binge of alcohol and, and drugs, and uh, but that Sunday morning, waking up for uh, two days of this kind of living, I felt so empty in my life. And um, I just um, knew there was something more, that the alcohol and drugs weren't satisfying my... It wasn't satisfying me, there was still something empty, and life was miserable, and it was there, and laying on the bed in the quietness of my parents' back room that I said the sinner's prayer, and I... I guess basically, I remember the prayer, basically I said, Lord, I asked him to forgive me, that I recognized that I was a sinner, I made mistakes, and I asked the Lord to forgive me and to cleanse me from my sins and to give me a new life with Him. And um, But then too, when I think about that uh, time in my life, I think I, a verse that really, I guess when you look back at it now, it, 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 it comes back to me, found in Romans 6, 30, 23. It says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. What it says is, it says, For the wages of sin is death, it says that, but really, what death brings, what really sin brings upon us, it brings misery. It brings, it doesn't bring lasting satisfaction. And, and apparently, it, it, Scripture says that uh, it brings death upon us as people. But then, if you think about the last part of the verse, it says, "But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord." And that's what I received that morning, that Sunday morning, is a free gift of God that He offers me eternal life through Son Jesus. And I thank the Lord for that decision. And, it is probably the most important decision I made in my life. And I, no matter what you're going through in life, if you're continuing to live a life of alcohol, drugs, or whatever other things you're going through, maybe similar things that I was going through, maybe marriage problems, other means, but I want to tell you that Jesus is the answer to all your needs, that He can fulfill that emptiness in your life and give you life uh, anew like He's done for me. Thank you. And it's found in Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2, and it says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. At this point in my life, the Lord continues to, although I've been walking with the Lord for many years now, like for for uh, 13 years, going on 14 years, the Lord continues to change me and continues to mold me into the person He wants to be. And the Lord can do the same for you. Uh, my name is Greta uh, Chicho. Um, I'm from Muskegness, Quebec, and it's in the northern part of uh, Quebec. Um, I wanted to share a bit uh, with you about my testimony and how I came to know the Lord. As a young child, um, my late mother used to take us to Sunday school, and it was the first time that that I'd heard the stories of Jesus, and it was a. Uh, um, and she would be the one that would be telling us the, the stories. And, and um, I went to Sunday school when, at a very young age and until when I was in, in, in a teenager. But I've never decided to, uh, to accept Jesus in my life. And then in, during my teenage years, I, had a, I really lived a very... Uh, a life of um, of not knowing where I was going and not knowing about even the true meaning of life. In Romans uh, chapter three, um, verse twenty-three, it says, verse twenty-three: For for all have sinned and fall fall short of the glory of God. And uh, these are some of the verses that uh, Dallas Ro Roberts shared with me at the time that I came to know the Lord. And the other one that he shared was Romans 10, and it says, That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart 
that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved.